Elizabeth, I'm really, really so excited to chat to you about setting intentions today. Why is it important? How do we do it? Give us a little bit the ins and outs. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So I would imagine the students going through your offerings are learning little tidbits of how to do certain things, for example, grounding. And just to add to that, grounding is actually an intention. So everything we do to move from point A to point B is considered an intention. A prayer is an intention. A, a goal is an intention. But we want to get really simple about intention. So I'm going to keep it really simple. Intention is about being clear about what you want. Really simple. It's about being clear about what you want. But it doesn't stop there because a goal would offer you a to-do list, for example, or um, a map would give you means to get from point A to point B if you were driving in your car. But intention is you making that pivot that, and it's an internal thing you're here and you're moving down this way, but you want to go over here. And if we're, if our habits and patterns and behaviors and belief systems, our self-talk, for example, we're on that train and we're going one direction and we know we want to change that. We want to go over here instead. There's an internal pivot that happens when we really get clear and get honest with ourselves, I want this, but I'm going down this track. We have to pivot internally. That pivot in and of itself can often be enough. That internal decision to change direction, very powerful. What's dangerous and what the mistake is that we make is we're going down the track. We say we want what we want, but we're not really willing to jump off the track that we're on. So intention is kind of starting with a fresh, clean slate. And so when we do our sessions, right, put your feet on the ground in the morning and ask yourself, where do I want to go today? How do I want to feel today? I say the ultimate real question is what is the ultimate highest expression of myself today and that's really an interesting question to ask right because i'm not saying what is your to-do list i'm not saying what is your goal to complete i'm saying what is the greatest expression of yourself today and if you wanted to you could really meditate on that and sit with that and ask yourself over your arching life what is the greatest expression of your life and we, we kind of break it down, right, to who I am in my life is going to be about who I am today. So what is the greatest expression of myself today? We don't stop there, though, because what we want to do is engage that frontal brain here. This is a huge part of our creative center, our, our spiritual center, our intuitive center. We want to really engage that. And this is where imagination really comes in handy because we're engaging that part of our brain that talks, basically talks, cause and effect. So it's like the sunroom of our brain where we open those doors and we say, I welcome in all, every good thing. I expect good things today. I expect good things today. It leaves the door unopened. I mean, excuse me open to the unexpected. We want that. We don't want to put our, you know, say I want this and I want it to look like this, this, and this. No. Intention is about saying I want to move in this general direction of expressing myself in these ways, but we open the door to 
unexpected happenings. That opens the door to synchronicities and surprises and coincidences, happy accidents, things that show us that we are actually doing that divine dance with creator. So the creator within me is lining up with the ultimate creator. Those synchronicities are things to look for and even ask for. You know, I want to be on this path. Show me a sign that I'm on the path. And things start flowing more easily when we do this. Intention is that point where we aim our arrow to the bullseye that we choose to be ending up in. The bullseye, though, has to be clear. We can't just say, I want to feel, well, I guess you could, but getting clear is better. So I want to, the, the greatest expression of myself today is X, Y, and Z. And you really feel into that. That's the next key. You get clear in your mind about what you want. You actually meditate on the symbol of it. It can actually take five to, to 15 minutes. I recommend though, when you put your feet firmly on the ground, you ground yourself up and down because that's just my, I think it's really important to prime yourself before you set your intention. You cannot rush. Why would you wanna rush moving into the highest, highest expression of yourself when everything in between is really important to note while you're getting started? You're just learning right? You can't just go to the gym once and expect yourself to be fit and, you know, strong. You've got to go to the gym. You've got to practice. The, the proof is in the practice. The proof is in the practice. And practicing little bits at a time every day, just asking yourself, hang on, am I really moving in the direction of my greatest expression today? Is this action that I'm about to do lining up with my greatest expression of myself? Does this fit my vision? How are we going to know what that vision is unless we spend some time with it? So that's what your intention is first in the morning. See yourself in your highest expression. Feel yourself in your highest expression. So that's, that's the key. See yourself in your highest expression. So imagine it, visualize it. Don't stop until you actually feel that expression. So what you're doing is you're literally building a bridge to your future self. And your future self is reflecting back to you what it feels like to be in that state. You are training your brain and your body epigenetically by creating an environment internally of your external experience. The brain does not know any different between reality and imagination. That's the power of imagination. It's incredibly important. So we see it, we don't stop seeing it until we feel it. We dip our toe into the vibration of what it feels like to achieve that vision. We flood ourselves with these positive hormones and chemicals and we open up our gene codes. We're basically informing our body to get ready for good things. And then we feel our way into, okay, what is this future part of me feeling? What are they saying to themselves? What are they believing about themselves? What are they expecting in their reality? How do they feel in their body? How is their mind operating? I guarantee you that ideal future version of yourself is not experiencing the same troubled thoughts and anxieties and fears that the person that we are right now as we embark on that future might be feeling. We cannot 
if you if you really want to think about also the the kind of the quantum laws here, what we're doing is we're engaging ourselves in the quantum reality of of this of this life, the unseen realms. What we're used to and what we've been taught is the Newtonian science that you are fated to this reality, that you are stuck with your body, you're stuck with your genes, you're stuck with every belief and thought that you've got and you just got to live with it. The quantum field says, I am not fated except in my mind and in my thoughts and in my feelings. My beliefs determine my fate, not the other way around. And that requires us to have a lot of faith in ourself and in the reality that's possible but we cannot have a possibility coming through into our world unless we keep that door open. When we have a thought that says, I want this, but I can't have it. You just shut the door. You tried to open it and then you slammed it on yourself. We've got to find a way to keep that door open to possibility. And that's why I love the imagery of the sunroom in the, in the frontal low because it says I receive all the light and it might be blinding to me I may not know where I need to go and that's okay because I'm calling in the highest expression of myself and my life I don't know necessarily what that entails but I call in the path that will take me there and I choose to trust that and what that light does for me when I meditate on that is it kind of opens a back door into the dark areas of my brain that need a little cleaning out that say, I can't have that. I can't do that. I can't be that. And, and I allow that light to kind of come in and wash it away, almost like a waterfall cleaning out my back rooms in my brain. It cleans out the subconscious cobwebs that might have been there hidden kind of clawing me back into an old reality that I don't want to be living in. But that's just the, the how we're programmed. It's, it's a very interesting way to look at things, but it's how we're programmed. And talk therapy is designed to kind of undo the cobwebs one at a time. I say, let's just open the floodgates and transform and transmute those cobwebs into light and allow the light to show us a new way. And we can feel it in our bodies. It changes us. All we do is we say, what is the greatest expression of myself today? I allow the light to clean out the cobwebs that block me from that light, from that expression, and I release that into the light. That prayer and that intention will work for me. It may be different for everyone. It may be that you just say, I choose to feel joy today. And if you sit in the light and you say joy, what what is joy? What what does joy look like in my life expressed? Everything in your body is wired differently not to have that joy just yet. So we've got to make room for the joy, right? So we still I say bring in the floodgates bring in the light, wash out everything that's blocking your joy. It may feel, you may feel it in your body stuck. Maybe it's in your heart. Maybe it's in your belly. Be present to that. What you're doing is developing a new relationship to the quantum field. You're actually summoning in invisible particles of electricity and spiritual juice that can come in, but if we don't have room made to receive it, if we have a belief that says I can't have it, then that'll be an invisible kind of dark gray, whatever barrier that won't let it in. So again, if you feel like you're stuck, open another, open the floor and let that goo fall out. Open the floor and let the black goo fall out of your space down the grounding cord. We're getting a little more technical and more advanced here, but um, I think you're feeling, hopefully, the, the viewer here can feel you're using your imagination 
to set an intention for where you want to go, we must make the space though for what wants to reside in us. If we don't make the space, we, we won't let ourselves have it. So setting intention is, it's a wonderful way to point our individual internal arrow in the direction of our dream and create that possibility. There's many different ways to do it. You'll find yours, experiment, play around, but don't stop. You know you've activated it when you feel it. I'll just leave it at that. You've activated your intention and put it in place when you can feel and touch, basically the, touch the feet of your future self or the ideal of what you want to create. If you can feel it, you've activated it already. And then we just work toward maintaining that through the day. How's my, you know, how's my joy intention? What color is joy for me? For me, it's yellow. For others, it might be a different thing. But when I think of yellow, I feel that tingle of joy. I think of sunflowers and happy, just happiness and childlike kind of joy. And, and I touch that yellow. Maybe I fill myself with that yellow. I think of the yellow. I wrap myself in it. And then I'm connected again. And maybe I have to do that a few times in the day. And it makes me feel good. And that's enough. I've done it. I've tapped into it. And then at the end of the day, after you've set your intention in the morning, pointing your arrow to the general direction of where you want to go and feeling into that, at the end of the day, review your day. How did I do? How did I do? How did I do touching my intention, touching the feet of my future self? Did I give my future self a hug? Could I feel her success? Could I feel and connect? with who that person is. How did I do? What could I have done differently? How can I congratulate myself for a job well done for what I did? I did what I set out to do. And it's different than a to-do list, isn't it? That's different than a goal setting because that's all based on your doing and your merit. This is a different thing. This is about a way of being, who I am being throughout the day moving into that future self that I have set forth. And it's incredibly powerful.